Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's virtual plant clinic. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with University of Florida Extension in Hernando County. And my special holiday guest today is Lily Browning with Hernando County Utilities Department. And she is our county's Florida Friendly Landscape Coordinator. Good morning, Bill. How are you? I'm good. I'm at the office and boy, all of a sudden it got foggy outside. It looks yeah. even more dreary. Been pretty gray uh, the several days. Um, kind of reminded me of up north <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. And since um, we were just discussing before we went on air, I was listing the low temperatures for the next, I mean, tonight it'll be fine. Um, but see if I can find it again. Um, Friday night here in Hernando County, low of 26. Saturday night, Christmas Eve, low of 26. Christmas on Sunday, low of 29. Monday the 26th, low of 31. Tuesday, low of 36. Then it'll start getting warmer again. So this is something that's going to be on a lot of people's minds because it's, it's going to get below freezing, <laughs> you know, here in yep. Hernando County. So, as you see, Dr. Lester has a um, very short PowerPoint I put together. And it is available on my Facebook if you want to go look at it there. And hopefully it'll be on YouTube, hopefully today or the next day. I'm not sure what John's holiday, you know, <laughs> if he's <laughs> off, you know, or what. But I yeah. expect today... There's not much point in me sending out any important emails and expecting a response. No. Because mm -hmm. almost nobody's around. Yeah. I noticed yesterday, all of a sudden, I wasn't getting any emails. I'm thinking, is something broken? No, it's just that everybody was cutting out. So. Well, traditionally, my uh, boss, Alice, she takes, you know, the week. Um, She's here today, but she'll be, you know, gone uh, the week after Christmas. She's actually doing something fabulous. She's going to Europe um, <laughs> this time. Um, but that's just traditionally her time off with her family and everything. So I am used to working, you know, that those quiet days between Christmas and New Year's. And I like it. I like it a lot. It's, it's almost the next best thing to working from home except you do have to go somewhere, <laughs> but it's yeah. cool and quiet and you are able to catch up on things. And But let's get back to that cold. It's going to get cold. It's going to get below freezing. Would you like me to start this little PowerPoint? So we sure. But we'll first, it. let me mention, for anybody watching this as a recording or watching it live, if you tune in, this is for Hernando County specifically even though it's going to get cold all over florida cold is kind of relative so for example buddy good morning how are you doing buddy's up in the panhandle it's going to get really really cold up there and it probably already is mm -hmm. and lee good morning lee how are you lives down in broward county so it's and it's not going to get in the 20s down there it'll right. get chilly but not freezing pipes and killing plants kind of cold right but this it does apply to to buddy and um i mentioned a few things yesterday buddy was one of two people who watched me live yesterday in the, <laughs> in the program i gave good for him yes. so good morning cindy from pinellas county mm -hmm. let's real quick we go through this when winter visits the sunshine state Ken Tim's dealing with old man winter in Central Florida. He's coming. He's coming for the holidays. The old man is coming for the holidays. So tip number one is don't panic, right, Dr. Lester? Our cold snaps never last long, and we have, and I just kind of listed off, three to four day winters here. In the winter season, we have cycles of three to four day winters, and then it'll warm up again. Yeah, yep, it's going to be in the 30s and 40s in Broward. We're going to be in the upper 20s here in Hernando County. Is yeah. this you've heard of? Is this unprecedented, Dr. Lester? No, it happens all the time, or most all the time. And I've been here when it's gotten 17, you know, multiple times. 
and the state's still here. So enjoy your nice, cool Christmas. Tip number two, the right plant in the right place. Um, that's the number one principle of Florida Friendly Landscaping. A bit hard to do anything about it as far as emergency measures <laughs> go, but this is a long-term thing. If you have the right plant in the right place, are we going to worry about our hollies or our, you know, um, any kind of shrubs out there or specific? No, I tell people if it grew in your yard up in New Jersey, you don't have to cover it here because it gets a lot colder up there. Yeah, so there, you know, if you have plants that should be growing in Lee's or even in Cindy's yard up here in Hernando County, those are the ones you're going to need to protect. And it's going to get 26, 27, depending on how long it stays that cold. That's a major factor. Um, depends on, you know, I'm going to predict we're all going to have some pretty dead looking yards when this cold snap is through. Does that mean the plants are actually going to die? No. Probably not. Probably not. Tip number three. This is something we rarely have to do because nature kindly does it for us. Almost every single cold snap I've been through, there have been very few that I've been through that came without a rain bringing it. So we had the rain a few days ago and usually then, you know, we're going to have another rain and it'll be gone. That is great because one of the things we can do to help the soil retain some of its heat and stuff is to make sure it's pretty moist. Nature's going to do that for us. What you don't want to do is do that tomorrow. <laughs> you don't want to do that right before it's going to be 26 degrees at night. Nature had the right plan and did it, you know, a few days ahead of time and we'll do it on its way out. So you, we we can skip that step because we nature's done that for us. Get that soil, you know, nice and moist so it retains some heat. I'll let you talk about, so you're the scientist, the science behind why we cover cold sensitive plants. And maybe down south, um, our ladies down south, they may have some really cold sensitive tropicals that do suffer when it gets in the 40s. So they might have to think about covering some of them. Yeah, what are, when you, doing? When you, what are we trying to accomplish? When you cover a plant, you're trying to hold in the heat that's being lost from the soil and keeping it around the plant. You're not trying to like put a coat on your plant like we would put a coat on because plants don't generate their own heat. So you're just trying to capture like the picture on the left there. You're going to put the cover over so that it covers the ground also so it holds in the heat that's coming out of the soil overnight. People can, and you need to be careful, you could put some type of little light or something underneath that cover to give off warmth and keep it warm. So if you cover the plant like the one on the right here, and you just cover the canopy of it, tie it up to the trunk, you're really not holding in any heat because the heat from the soil is all now being lost to the cold air outside. Yes, okay. Um, does it have to be like 75 degrees in this tent? No, it just needs to keep it above freezing. And a lot of times what we're trying to do and all you can do with cold protection is keep the temperature a couple degrees higher than it would have been if you hadn't covered it. Mm -hmm. 33 is all you need. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, if you have orchids and things like oh, that, right. If you build a greenhouse, you can heat greenhouses. You can keep greenhouses toasty warm when it's snowing outside. So that's a totally different situation. If that's what you want, you're going to have to spring for a greenhouse. But for um, plants just out in the ground in your yard, you just have to keep them a little bit warmer. Find a spot in your yard that stays a little bit warmer. Uh, put it in a spot where the wind is blocked a little bit. It's all these little... You save one degree here, one degree there, one degree there, and it's going to be enough to make a difference between fairly healthy plant or fairly dead plant by the time it warms up again. And speaking of science, I'll let you cover this one. Should we do this? 
No, don't do this. This is what commercial growers do where they run their irrigation. Uh, strawberry farmers will do this. Later in the winter, blueberry farmers, maybe blackberry farmers if we get a really late freeze or frost. You can't accomplish this because they have large irrigation systems. You have to keep the spray of water on the plants constant. Otherwise, the temperature really drops on the plants and it kills them, makes things even worse than if you had just left it alone. So your lawn will be fine. Your lawn ain't going to go nowhere. It's going to come back. It's going to get some damage. The weeds, a lot of weeds are going to freeze and die. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Yeah, I'm going to get to that part just near the end. Mm -hmm. So in, when we're talking about covering plants, and we, we already discussed in that one, um, but don't create what we call lollipops. And I created the new mantra, lollipops are for suckers, and you didn't like that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that one. I'm still getting used to that idea. <laughs> um, especially in a pot where I have crossed off here, you're not accomplishing nothing with that. You know, potted plants are another issue. Um, um, they're not protected by the soil <laughs> you know so they we're going to talk about what to do about them but here you um i think bb is even asking about frost cloth there um can you leave true breathable translucent frost cloth on plants for multiple days in case you have to go away for a few days i've seen a yeah. nurse saying yes, you, can. Can. Yeah. you should be able to depending on exactly the um, consistency or the the brand or how the frost cloth was made so double check the directions but frost cloth see the problem is when people cover their plants for a cold night the next day the sun comes up let's say the sun comes out and it gets warm if your stuff is still covered it may cook and get mm -hmm. too hot very quickly frost cloth is very similar to the same kind of cloth they'll cover plants with to keep insects off of them. So frost cloth breathes and should be safe to leave on your plants for a few days. Um, unless the temperature, let's say we have a freeze and the next day the temperature shoots up to 85. Which that's can different, happen. you know. It's not going to happen. happen in here. Yeah, that's not in the forecast, but it, no. it can happen. But this picture on the right is the way to do it with Frost cloth with a blanket, um, with you know, blanket's going to work a little better than sheets, but no plastic, no blue tarps, no anything like that, because that plastic just transfers the cold. Uh -huh. What it ends up doing, but you see, this is perfect because when Bill talked about what we're trying to do, we're trying to capture that radiant heat that's escaping the ground. Our ground is not going to freeze. So the top couple layers may be, you know, like 48 and you get further down and you may be in the 60s or 70s. So that's what you're trying to do is capture that. So they've created a tent that reaches to the ground and they're even holding it down in case of some winds, which is a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anything you have that can hold it down. Ideal, ideal situation, like if you have small plants that you can put a box over that is a literal tent that is not touching the plant at all, that's ideal. That's like creating a mini greenhouse. It's not usually practical. So, so you know, so your cover is probably gonna touch the plant in some ways, but that's why you wanna use blankets or go get some frost cloth, but just make sure that it, it's you're encapsulating and it reaches the ground. Doing this is just occupying your time <laughs> and not accomplishing anything um and you bill just talked about you know if you have certain frost cloths that are designed specifically to let some light and some air through you can get away with keeping them on for a few days if you're going away for the holidays or something if you're putting sheets or blankets over you know, it's going to get up into the 60s, maybe 50s during the day. Let those plants out. <laughs> you know, 
you don't want to cook them, but also photosynthesis, they kind of need that. <laughs> it's kind of how they grow. So it, it creates more work for you, but I have seen people go to massive efforts to cover up all their plants and then, then don't take the things off for a couple of weeks. If your plants didn't die from the cold, they died from being covered up for too long. Yeah, they'll get damaged from the excess heat. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> this is what I was kind of alluding to. I think after a good cold snap like we are fixing to have, <laughs> your yard's going to look dead. <laughs> you know, it's going to look like winter went through. Mine will. I'm not going to any extreme efforts. I've, I have developed over the years a tough love situation. Things are going to get crispy. And I do kind of use it as a time, you know, uh, to regenerate, to say, okay, good. Now we can clean all this up and start all over again in spring. Don't clean it up yet. Don't clean it up until spring, but it kind of helps you. Um, but we're in central Florida. This may be different for those in Broward or further south, but we're in central Florida. We have winter and it's okay to look like winter. <laughs> if you live, this is the way that I compared it to yesterday. If you lived up north right now, we're going about your day, going in and out to work, going Christmas shopping, doing whatever you were doing, would you even be paying one bit of attention to your yard? Probably no, not. because if you live in Chicago, your windshield temperatures are minus 50. So but you're, you're yeah. only focusing on one thing. Getting back in the house. Yeah. Yep. Um, but your yard, even if it doesn't snow, you know, it looks like eh, it's winter. We have winter too. It's okay to, for your yard to look like eh, it's winter. Put out some... If you want some color, you know, get some winter annuals, get some pansies and petunias and snapdragons and all those wonderful kind of to bring that color. But it's OK. I have not seen a root killing freeze here in Hernando County in probably 12 years or so. We used to get that cold where like your hibiscus and stuff would just die, die, die. But now Things aren't dying down to the roots. Not saying they won't, but I wouldn't expect it this time. Yeah, certain things, the what the Thai plants or tea plants, mm -hmm. they all it takes is a little bit of a frost here in Central Florida, and they're seriously damaged. So if you have them in a pretty unprotected spot, they may not come back. Mm -hmm. Your hibiscus are going to get bit. Um, uh, Firebush, you know, and that's a native, which probably grows to 500 feet tall down in South Florida. You know, they're they're going to get frost bitten. You know, they're gonna they're gonna freeze the foliage here. I fully expect mine to. So when spring comes again, at least mid March, um, I say that that is what. You know, mid March to beginning of April, we are outside of the danger of having a frost event again. You don't want to prune too soon because pruning, remember I said we had those three day winters and then warm up times. So you prune the ugly off, we have those warm up times, it starts new growth, which is close to the base, you know, where all that new stuff is. Then we have another cold snap and you just possibly, you know, brought the cold damage down maybe to the roots. So leave it alone. Even that in those warm up periods, if new growth comes by itself naturally, this old dead stuff is going to help protect it when we have a cold snap. So I always say to people live with the ugly to at least mid March. We've had freezes at the beginning of April. I say that I myself, you know, end of February get, get kind of itchy and start <laughs> cleaning stuff up. Just know you're taking chances when you're doing that. Okay, let's talk about the lawns, Bill. Is it okay if my lawn looks straw colored? Yes. All the different turf grasses that we grow here in Florida do go dormant during the winter. So they may turn uh, golden, they may turn tan, they may turn brown. They're going to come back. They ain't going to die. 
years ago, we would have Floratam killing freezes. But that's when it would be in the teens for four or more hours. That hasn't happened in about 15 years. Nobody worries about their Floratam lawns being actually killed down to the roots from a freeze. Again, not saying it can't happen. It just hasn't happened in many years. So yeah, it's going to turn golden. Learn to love your golden lawn. <laughs> Can you water or fertilize it back to being green during the winter? No. <laughs> no. You just have you have to wait until spring for the lawn to recover and perk up and start to grow and the weather to get warmer, the days to get longer. That's what makes your lawn here in Florida grow and be green and look like a golf course basically it's responding to the shorter daylight hours which we just experienced the shortest you know mm. amount of daylight hours yesterday and with the winter solstice so it goes into a semi dormancy it's sloughed off most of its roots so fertilizing it is going to accomplish absolutely nothing except putting fertilizer through the ground you know through the ground into the groundwater um it doesn't need watered. You can skip a week of irrigation. Of course, you and I, neither one of us, irrigate our lawns at all, ever. Nope. If you think you have to mow with maybe some winter weeds are popping up, <laughs> you know, mow very, very, very high. Otherwise, leave it alone. Let it take its winter's nap. And don't try to force it into doing something it's not supposed to do. It's a warm season grass. We have warm season grasses in Florida because we have a warm season most of the time. That's what's going to grow well. If you wonder why was my grass green under the snow up north, because it was a cool season grass. <laughs> but remember when you didn't have rain in August, then then, you, then your lawn up north looked like this. That's just how it responds, whether it's a cool or a warm season grass. And here's something when we're talking about pots, as I said, the pots, um, they're not protected. You've got that roots basically out there in the open. Um, they don't have the ground temperature to protect them. This is just something somebody I know, I told her to gather them together, maybe put them against the house. So she did that. She got them all close together against the house. Then she had the right idea of using this ladder and cover it up, you know, with some cloth, the, the ladder there. So it's going to get some ground heat, but also some house heat in there, too. So I thought that was a pretty clever idea. Bring your potted plants in if you can into the garage. That's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow morning. Dragging them all into the garage. I already made room. Mm -hmm. Again, that's not a place you want to keep them because it's usually dark in your garage. Let's well, they're going to have to stay there until the temperatures get and stay above freezing. So right. a couple you days. You can at least open, turn the light on or yeah. open your garage door. For um, a lot of plants, a couple days aren't going to do them in. Right. Depending, right. Totally depending on the plant. Right. So that's our quick. Um, the last tip is um, different, <laughs> different um, videos you can watch on Hernando County government YouTube, I have on there, go to Hernando County, Florida Friendly Landscaping, that playlist, then look for after the freeze, because that's going to be coming up, protecting pollinators from the cold, winter is coming, that's also up on my Facebook right now, and your Florida Friendly Winter Landscape, and hopefully soon, this exact thing that I just went over with you will be on YouTube if you want to show you know your friends and family and guess what bill i put those two yesterday i turned in two more videos to be put on youtube and you know what that'll mean when those two are up 101 nope 100 <laughs> oh. 100 videos i thought you were, i thought you were closer than that so i thought no. i would have put you no. higher i will be reaching 100 videos i can retire <laughs> and i just put the link in the comments in the chat there for everybody so you should be able to click on the link go to hernando county government's youtube channel and lily has a playlist for florida friendly landscaping 
and I have a playlist for uh, extension. And I don't have 100 videos up there yet. Nowhere near. I'm working well, you're in about at least 50 of mine. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Played, played a part there. Looks like we got a lot of comments to go through while I was talking. So. <laughs> Not a lot, but mm -hmm. uh, Cindy in Pinellas County said, I'm caring for my neighbor's plants while they're away for three weeks. Lots of potted plants on the carport. The large jade is a concern. Also roses and other succulents. Should I give them any water today? I've seen jade and Christmas cactus shrivel up. If they need to be watered, I mean, you can do the old put your finger in the soil to see if it's bone dry or damp or moist. If it's moist, they don't need to be watered. With any kind of container plant, most people, their biggest problem is they overwater. For me, it's the opposite. My biggest problem is I never water. <laughs> but for most people, it's the overwater. So if they need some water, that's fine. Jade plants can definitely freeze. If they're on the carport, they're going to, you know, be at somewhat more of an advantage. It's covered. You got the heat from the house. Maybe smush them together, you know, a little more than they are. Um, but, you know, in Pinellas. And, and it comes down to exactly how cold it's supposed to get in your neighborhood. I don't think house. the roses will be a concern at all, really. Yeah. But. Um, coastal Pinellas should be no problem. Yeah, I don't think they will. And, you know, for some of these things, a little extra cold weather is really beneficial for it. Mm -hmm. For anybody who's grown peaches, plums, or nectarines, some, and it doesn't really help if you get like just one or two or three nights, but we've had winters where we just get a lot of cold weather during the winter. Uh, fruit trees really like a little bit of extra cold during the winter. They're going to flower a lot better in the spring. You're going to get more fruit off of it. Even some of the tropicals like that kind of dip or jolt from some cold weather. It gives them kind of an extra kick. You see what Buddy's doing? He puts hot hands, 18 yeah. hour body warmers under the blankets or in pots under the pot covers. That's a pretty good idea, especially for the pots. Yeah. I read something about taking them and putting them up against the stem or the trunk. You can do that also. So those are those little warmers that people up north get to put in your pockets. You got them for your feet. Or in your shoes also i'm not sure you go up north a lot more than i do you should know <laughs> i should stay inside I, go. I don't go up there during the winter I, i'm i've I'm been up there in the winter i've been i was there last january because not the brightest person ever but you know the houses are pretty warm <laughs> there. yeah and you really only just like here in the summer you know unless you have a job or you're working outside which many people do but your majority of people run from car store car house car work they yeah you know so a lot of them don't even bother they have a winter coat but because they're not out in it that much they don't hardly even wear them because they're just darting from one <laughs> enclosed area to another yeah. yeah, Cindy said that's a good idea about putting the potted plants closer together. It also makes them easier to cover. Mm -hmm. If you put them all together, it takes fewer sheets or blankets or whatever you might be trying to cover it with. Yeah. My potted plant collection is all just getting dragged into the garage. So yeah. I have a few on my back porch I'll bring into the house. They're just like Swedish ivy and stuff. <coughs> I have multiple pots of the same original Swedish ivy that was my mother's. So, you know, if I'm, I'll bring them and put them in the house. There's a, a staghorn fern out there, but it's lasted through. I mean, it's not in great shape. I don't know if it's even alive anymore, but that is one thing. You know, a lot of people have to figure out how to cover if it's too big to move. My hibiscus are probably going to get zapped, but I'll just wait and see if they're going to come back. You know, I know my firebush will. That purple millet looking 
um, plants that grow real tall that I got from the Master Gardener Nursery. Yeah, that's an ornamental grass. They're going to get zapped. <laughs> you know, oh, kind of, I, ha I have three big dangerous. bunches of lemongrass that's going to be totally brown lemongrass. Sure. The lemongrass, well, the, your gingers, the, the pine cone gingers, they're interesting. They're going to freeze and they're going to stand there frozen for all eternity while the new <laughs> growth comes if you don't take the old stuff down. It doesn't fall down or anything. It just stands there, you know, looking dead. Um, my my lawn will look golden, but you know we go through these every year, this kind of stuff, and it, it all comes back. And it is great mm -hmm. for early spring. Then just clear it all away and let you know all the new growth come. And but you don't want to for several reasons. You don't want to just start pruning everything like I said. That's going to potentially cause more damage for you. But even like wildflower stalks and stems and things you've got pollinators hiding in there and you know to keep warm and to do their things so don't do a fall or winter clean out wait until spring and live with the ugly is what i call it and know it's all part of nature yeah because this is still december we're most likely going to get more cold weather so this is just the right. first of it not the last of it so lee's mentioning her vegetables what are you going to do with your vegetables uh, I do still have some um, uh, eggplants and peppers and hot peppers and even a couple tomato plants going. Uh, they're gonna, they're just gonna freeze and die. I knew they would this winter, but I wasn't gonna pull them up if they were still producing. Mm -hmm. I left them in, let them keep producing. I went out there and picked pretty much everything off of them. I need to catch the rest this afternoon, I guess. Or so what if you have like cool season stuff like broccoli and radishes kale bok choy broccoli lettuce and they should all do pretty much just fine do you have to cover them no or not? no no okay. no i'm most of my tropical stuff is in containers so i can drag it all in the garage other than that uh i got three crotons that are in the ground and they're that's going to be a problem yeah they're going to get bit but like i said i don't think it's going to be where you'll lose them They'll, they'll come back. Yeah, but, and I know they'll, they'll get a lot of cold damage. They'll drop all their leaves. It's just, it's going to take until like August for them to grow mm -hmm. back and look decent. And you're never getting ahead. You know, your crotons are always a foot tall. She keeps crotons in the pots. <laughs> That's what she should do. Yeah, no, I probably need to move to putting them in large decorative pots. I have a, a, a bed with rock mulch that goes all around the pool and i've just come to the conclusion that that soil is terrible mm. and they ain't no fixing it with black cow or compost or anything things are going to have to go in containers and you can bury the containers mm -hmm. so it looks kind of like it's growing in the ground unless you look real close it's not you can find ground that level and pot level above it you can find that information soon when it comes on youtube but it's on my facebook for a class i did yesterday on florida friendly container gardening <laughs> where i talk I'm about do that. i'm tired of fighting that soil over oh, in that yeah i talk true. about the pot in pot method which is what they do at you know epcot disney in the happiest place in the world have you ever seen a bad looking plant no no because all those wonderful you know beds of plants they're all little pots <laughs> in a little bit bigger pots so when one starts looking bad there's a secret disney fairy that sneaks up behind you and switches them out we can't afford to do that but we can still do like you said do either put some nice decorative pots on that rocky uh bed or submerge some pots and make it look like you know they're yep. they're in the ground yep. and lee down in broward county does the same thing <laughs> So let me take a moment here to share a link to our survey. And this is a very short, painless survey. So if you've never taken it before, please go ahead and click on the link and take the short, painless survey. And uh, if you've already taken it before, don't take it a second or third or fourth time. Everybody just needs to take it once. 
but everybody needs to take it once. So if you're watching a recording of this, go ahead and look at the comments and scroll down and you should find the link for the survey and if you could take that short survey. Basically just asking from these virtual plant clinics, did you learn anything? Did you implement it? And do you watch it? Li watch us live or recorded or both? And I think that's about all I asked. And um, you know, the I never mentioned this to you. The majority of people watch both. They watch live and recorded. Yeah. Okay. Um, some other cold weather tips that no don't necessarily have to do with plants themselves but if you're new here in florida what we do is we go around and disconnect all the hoses which you would have done you know late fall up north anyway you know so you don't have water freezing up into your pipes um my husband you know he's a little extra so he <laughs> wraps the, the spigots in socks and you know stuff like that and um he covers up the pool pump and as well as our well, we have a well as well as our well. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, he even puts like a little light bulb under the well. That's, that's you know, the, the only ex extra efforts. You can, and we've traditionally done this since I've lived in Florida, is um, it's gonna be a real cold snap. Um, let your one of your faucets drip so that there's water moving through it. Just make sure you remember to turn it off for water conservation <laughs> methods. But, yeah. yeah, I know that we'll have to keep the pool pump running 24-7 for a couple mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. And he Other has, than, he has it turning on pool. more he often. Covers. Yeah, and yeah, he has it turning on more often, so you're running the water through it. Mm -hmm. and as long as the water's moving, it shouldn't, shouldn't freeze. So... You know, these things, measures you don't necessarily think about up north because the pipes are insulated and covered and in basements and, you know, because they, it freezes there all the time. Here, that's not necessarily the case and you can't have burst pipes if you don't keep, you know, the water moving through them and don't allow it to have a reason for anything to freeze in there. Yeah, and there's other things. We have an RV also. And ours has the um, tank warmers, which is kind of like a heating pad mm -hmm. on top of the tanks, the, the black tank, the gray tank, and the fresh water tank so that they won't freeze up. Mm -hmm. And we've only had to run it once before. I think last year it got cold enough for maybe one night where we turned them on, and they work just great. They, keep, they I mean, it doesn't boil the water, but it keeps mm -hmm. it warm enough where it doesn't freeze. Yes. Problem is, next day, I let cashmere out. Our husky, and he starts sniffing around the RV, and he's sniffing and sniffing and sniffing. It's like, okay, what is underneath there? What are you sniffing at and looking at? Oh, you made it warm for a critter. He stuck his head back by the wheel well, by one of the back wheel wells, and when he does that, he's a white dog. He gets all dirty, so he's sticking his head back there, dives under the RV, comes popping out. He's got a raccoon in his mouth. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Drop the raccoon, let it go. So he dropped it, and the raccoon ran right back underneath the RV and <laughs> stayed there for a day or so. And we couldn't, we could look underneath there with a the flashlight, and he's on sitting on top of the tank where it's nice and warm because mm. we ran the tank warmer. So I guess it was a smart raccoon that found a warm spot to sleep with a heating pad kind of all night. Um, I ended up just leaving him alone, figuring, well, if we go inside, turn all the lights off, and we're quiet. He's just going to come out and go away. He did, and I haven't seen him ever since. Oh, okay. So, okay. what if you don't here, have any in water? In case anybody's water. wondering, there's Kashmir, the white <laughs> husky, and he's excited about the tank heaters going back on and the <laughs> prospects of finding a little raccoon to play with. The raccoon was fine. There were no raccoons injured in the whole thing. He just felt the need to well, pull the raccoon out. Well, that is he showed you that. Yeah. He was so proud of himself, too, and mm -hmm. he was just absolutely thrilled. And yeah. didn't get scratched or injured. So. so it all worked out well. And Cindy brings up a good point. She's hoping that uh, she gets a good freeze to kill the fleas. 
when we have a cold winter, if you get a lot of cold, freezing weather wherever you live, it does knock back insect pests a lot. They won't go extinct. They will come back one day, but when we have a really warm winter, gardening in the spring can be tough because all the pests just kind of hid in the leaves and they all survive. So you have a lot of them first thing in the spring. After a cold winter, you have far fewer. So you kind of you end up with a, um, a breathing, you end up with some breathing room in the spring. You can plant tomatoes and not get white flies. You can plant cucumbers and not get the pickle worms because they've all, they're all gone from your neighborhood until they come back a little bit later in the spring and in the summer. They will come back, but it takes time. So I see all these potted plants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he is beautiful and he okay. knows. Now let's look at this one. <laughs> Cindy says her potted plants are too large to move. Maybe she should take some cuttings beforehand. It's not a bad idea. That is a good idea. The spider wandering Jew, purple heart, aloe cactus. Um, yeah, the yucca and agave are up to nature's fate. She must be a masochist to have so many. No, you're just a uh, gardener like the rest of us. Not a bad idea, um, you know, to um, get some cuttings. Those are all easily um, propagatable plants from cuttings. Mm -hmm. So if you want to want to save them, if something happens to them, that, that's not a bad idea. Although the the uh, purple heart and the um, inch plant, that's the name of what we call the wandering Jews now, are, <laughs> um, I have some in my yard, probably shouldn't. The purple heart is not really the invasive kind. Again, it was a plant of my mother's. Freezes every year, comes back every year, so. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think most things we'll find will come back. And I keep seeing on Facebook about the iguana warning. Yeah, Watch out for drops or falling iguanas because it's going to get cold enough down south. Hey, if you need to free fill your freezer, it's the best time to do it. Just realize they're not dead. <laughs> they're just stunned. We don't have that problem yet. Yeah. And... I've never tried. I've never eaten iguana. I know that it is edible. I know that you could look online to find plenty of recipes for if you have a smoker grill or an outdoor grill. And I've seen pictures from down there. They can get really big. They're not all like little. A lot of them are pretty. Well, I'm not even in the square here. Pretty darn big. Um, yeah. I follow a comedian who talks about what level of Florida Jumanji are we on now? <laughs> Iguanas and tegu lizards fall in that. <laughs> yeah. Now, I don't know if the tegus are good eating or not. I'm going to have to find that out. I'm going to have to look it up. <sighs> because we do have tegus here in Hernando County and north of here. I they can survive up to Kentucky ish, they figure. Why are you telling me this? This is horrible. <laughs> they don't freeze, apparently, huh? They go um, into dormancy like a bear. I have not seen a take you visit. Those are like the three foot, you know, big ones. I know that. Okay, it says though. here. The meat is consumed by rural and native peoples. Which, oh, the, hey, there's a YouTube video. Catch and cook. Wild Florida Tegu. <laughs> uh, really? Let's not show that this morning. <laughs> no, because you're not, you never know what you're really going to get on YouTube. So. <laughs> so if you have problems with iguanas or tegus, hey, they're both edible. I try it. With the holidays coming, I also have a holiday plant um, video recently on YouTube as well as my Facebook page. So you can check that out about what to do with your poinsettias and Christmas cactus and amaryllis and um, whether or not 
um, Norfolk Island pines are a good idea and all that stuff. I think we talked about it in our last virtual plant clinic as well. Yes. I, I don't think so. I don't think the anoles and geckos are going to die, are they? Well, they are lizards and they're cold blooded. So they'll find a spot to hide or hunker down. <clears throat> and you won't see them around for days because it'll just be too cold. Um, they'll be <clears throat> like snakes. They'll find a place to yeah, weather yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm never sure noticed. they suffer some mortality, but not much because they are not, cold blooded. Not that I have ever noticed in my 44 years here. I've never noticed, wow, all the lizards are frozen. No, I don't. They'll, they'll find a place to weather it out. I don't know how far north the green and the brown anoles can live. I think up through at least the Carolinas. Really? Because I remember, I remember reading that, um, well, maybe Georgia. I remember reading that the southern, the more southern, like Georgia and Florida, why we don't have the, or it's a theory, why we don't have the same percentages of people getting Lyme disease is because our lizards eat the deer ticks that cause the Lyme disease. And so our lizards are not up north and that's why there's more occurrences. That was a theory that I read and I found very interesting. Well, according to the Oakland Zoo, they can, the, the brown ones, the Cuban anoles, can survive uh, from southern Georgia all the way through Florida to the southern tip of Mexico and the Caribbean, through obviously through Cuba. You know, their lifespan in the wild is four years, and their lifespan in captivity is eight years. Hmm. My goodness. I never asked a lizard how old they were. <laughs> Uh, Lee remembers when iguanas were falling out of the trees in 2010, but they came back to life when it warmed up. Yeah, you don't want to grab one and put it in your car. It's not dead. <laughs> yeah, but you want to go ahead and scoop them up and stock up your freezer while you can. While you can. <laughs> yeah, keep them in your freezer. They'll eventually die, I guess. <laughs> and then you can put them on the grill. Why not? Yeah. Along with the takers. You know, if that is a way to handle an invasive species is to, you know, eat the invasive species away, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> That's what they, they're trying to do with lionfish. So. Yes, and lionfish, um, I, Publix was selling it, and it's supposed to be pretty good. The, the tricky thing with lionfish is, you know, it, it's great that, they're using it, you know, as a, you know, each the invasive species away, but they're, they have to be spearfished. You can't hook fish them. Yeah, they, so you have they to go diving stay, and get them. Yeah, they don't stay fresh long. <clears throat> and you have to clean them properly to get the correct spines and spikes off of them. Yeah, they are some poison. of them are toxic, yes. So... So they're more of a delicacy. So it's not like you can just tell everyone here, eat, 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 eat the lionfish. But maybe we can figure out how to do that with iguanas. <laughs> yeah. Wonder if lionfish makes good sushi. I don't know, because of some of that <clears throat> toxicity, maybe they need to be cooked. You should bring that Brittany on. You should bring Brittany on. Um, yeah. Well, with the new year coming up, we need to have everybody back. Right. It's time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We need to get my boss Jim back on here. He could have told you all about lizards and anoles and birds and everything else. Cindy's only seen one green lizard in four years. They're out there, yeah. but but you may have to look hard for them. Now, which are the native and which are the not native? The green is the native. The brown one is also known as a Cuban anole. Okay. But it's been here for a long time. I never remember them not being here. The brown one can, yeah. has moved all the way up to southern Georgia. So it's pretty much all through Florida. Panhandle, I'm not sure about. Yeah, it's always uh, amusing to me if I'm with a northerner or something walking around and 
they make a comment or something about the lizards and like i didn't even see them <laughs> you know i mean i saw them but it didn't register as anything that shouldn't be there oh. lily look we have to have Brittany back on yeah. now we'll try um, to have her on right after new year's that was on i was only somewhat paying attention but yes um, the news story from Tampa about the loud noise that has been a mystery. It's some kind of fish in Tampa Bay, and they call it a drum fish. Oh. And there's this percussion type noise going on in the water, and it's loud. It's like boom, boom, and they're pretty sure it's these drum fish in their mating season. <laughs> and that's what they're, they're doing. So, yeah, it was. I was um, occupied doing something else, but I was somewhat aware that 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 was on. So that's what they they recorded these underwater boom, boom noises, and they think it goes to this what they call literally a drum fish. So, <laughs> I hadn't heard of those before either. I hadn't heard about that one on the news. Brittany would probably know about that because she that's does. Right some work at a research center in Tampa. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that she's at least aware of it and could tell us all about it. Yeah, I'll try getting. I'll try to do it. Yeah, um, I think you've lost your window of opportunity for a few months <laughs> to get Brittany on with the holidays and and other things. <laughs> so. Well, she can always do it just virtually from home from wherever yeah, she is she so. yes buddy has lizards up in tallahassee plenty and of it has that. plenty of both both the green and the brown so and what's interesting is how you have um, told me how those two species one being native one not being native have kind of developed a treaty of how to live with each other a tree tea <laughs> And that could explain why you don't see as many green ones. Go ahead and explain that. Sure. Um, the brown ones like to stay closer to the ground, and they are the invasive ones. So you'll see them running along the ground, your hedges, your bushes, around your mulch. They'll crawl up into trees, but they stay fairly low. The green ones are more than happy to climb much further up and higher up in the trees. So if you're looking for brown anoles and green anoles, the green ones are probably up high in a tree, and the brown ones are more the ones running across the sidewalk and the mulch and through the flower beds. So they occupy different niches in the environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have someone we haven't heard from before. William. Yes, but the, the brown ones did put a hurting on the population of the green ones, but the green ones in, in a lot of spots, most people who say that they have or have seen green ones, it's because they're living higher up and the brown ones like to stay lower down. Mm -hmm. So William says the, the native green one is nearly extinct in Florida. The Cuban one is less cold tolerant. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It comes initially from Cuba and it can handle cold on average up to about southern georgia during a really bad cold front it will kill a number of them but not all of them they're not going to go extinct or disappear from anybody's neighborhood yeah. for long so the green anole has a last stand in coastal south carolina where completion of the cuban anole does Com not competition from the cuban one yes. so mm -hmm. so yeah it's a lot of it is um the exact location, how cold it gets, who can survive up in a tree, who doesn't like to climb up high in trees. Do the brown ones eat the green ones? Yes, they do. Yeah. No, so that's why they're staying up in the trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why they ran up the tree. Yeah. That happens with our um, the Cuban tree frogs eat our native tree frogs as well. Cuban tree frogs will eat whatever they can get in their mouth that's appropriately sized, which is a lot of stuff. All of our native toads and frogs, lizards, whatever. So what about the Cuban tree frogs? Do you think they're going to die in some of these cold? 
they'll get knocked back. A lot of things basically get knocked back, but will reproduce sure. in the spring when everything warms up. Yeah, all. it's not going to make a major difference. <laughs> um, I know certain things, uh, Melaleuca trees will, if we have a couple of warm years, all of a sudden they move north. We have a really cold winter and all of a sudden they're all dead and chased back down south again. So they're sensitive to severe cold. A lot of other plants are. Good time. Um, this is something else to talk to Brittany about, though, um, to you know run to some of the springs and stuff where you get to see all the manatees who are huddling up together to keep warm as well. They're going to come into from the open waters into the springs, which are 70 degrees. <clears throat> and kind of all hang out in their big groups and and cuddle <laughs> so they can be warm. Yeah, the really bad cold does not do them any good. Mm -mm. So even though we do have springs where they come up, it's still really tough on them. Gators are up through the Carolinas, Louisiana, you know, Mississippi, where it can actually literally snow. You know, I think they'll be fine. Uh -huh. And they're they cold-blooded reptiles. They won't be active for right. days. <laughs> yes. You won't see them running around. When it warms back up, and the, if the sun comes out and it's nice and warm, they'll come out and they'll look for the sun. Snakes yeah. do that too on your sidewalk. They're just trying to get warmed up. Yep. And since I have also just entered this uh, recreational vehicle life, <laughs> I got a travel trailer. I've been reading some of the um, joining some of the Facebook groups. And now some of these people live full time in RVs, like in North Dakota or something insane like that. So I, I am expecting the, well, my toes just fell off. <laughs> soon. Um, they're all, you know, worried about how to winterize and things like that. I think at that point I would have come further south <laughs> before this all happened, but yeah, RVs can be um, four season, kind of cold, think cold tolerant. Mm -hmm. They take cold. So if it gets down a bit below freezing overnight, things aren't going to break. You do, if you're not in your RV, you have to drain all the water. You put actual antifreeze in it so pipes don't, you know, swell and bust and break pipes. Uh, if you're in it, if you run the engine for 10 minutes, that warms everything up underneath. What if it's but, a travel trailer? I guess you can put it on and. Yeah. But okay. other things, if you're, well, just think about it. I heard, and I think it's today in Chicago, the wind chill's minus 50. When it gets really, really, really cold, they, they may, you may not be able to stay in them. It may not work. No, you can't well. stay in them. Green is plumbing. I would find a hotel, but you still also got to worry about what's going to happen when you come back to it. But. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, they all come to F Florida for the winter. Right. All of them. <laughs> they should do. <laughs> yeah. No, a lot go to Texas. Um, but they had the real bad cold and ice <laughs> last year, and that damaged a ton of trailers because mm -hmm. it got colder than they thought it would, and people weren't prepared, and it broke a lot of plumbing and pipes, mostly. Yeah. So, okay. It happens. Yep. So, guys, mm -hmm. we need to wrap it up here shortly to try to stay on time. I just shared the link to our survey once again. Once again, if you haven't had a chance to take it, go ahead and take it. If you've already taken it one time in the past, you're good. You don't have to take it a second time. Cindy says she doesn't really see earthworms. And is it because my soil is sandy? We do have earthworms in Florida. But not everywhere. They're not as abundant as up north. And I think it is, you know, you see it, you see earthworms more in richer soil, the more inland you are, and it's with a lot of leaf drop. And, you know, you're not going to see it the closer you get to the coast. I don't, you don't see as many. Of course, you can amend your soil and add all kind of wonderful compost and all that that might actually attract them 
Right. I do that, and I do have some earthworms now, even in Spring Hill sand, because I guess the organic matter level is high enough. Mm -hmm. Where the last time I was digging around, turning things over, I did discover a couple earthworms. Yep. So if you guys have any really, really difficult in-depth questions over the holidays, here's Lily's email address. Go mm -hmm. ahead and send them to her because she's not doing anything important over the holidays. She's more than happy to answer your questions. I, w I will be here all next week, but we won't have the plant clinic because the one day, well, aside from Monday, we are all off Monday. Um, but on the, the 30th, I... That's my one day off. I will not be here on Thursday, the 30th, because um, taking my granddaughter to see Hamilton <coughs> Jazz Center. So. so, to answer Cindy's question, no, we will not have a virtual plant clinic next Thursday. We're going to be taking a week off for the holidays, but we will be back the week after that. And I'll reach out to Brittany and see. What she's doing, where's she going to be at? Can she join in? So, Cindy, you have a wonderful Christmas also. And Lee, like always, you have a wonderful Christmas too. And Lee, the pictures you sent me of your jalapeno plant, it has a fungus. If it doesn't get so cold, it freezes and dies down there over the next week. If you spray it with a fungicide and encourage some new growth on it, you may be able to have it grow back out, flower, and get more jalapenos off it. It's starting to look real tired and real fungusy, and you're probably not gonna get a whole lot of new growth at the moment, well, especially not right now with cold weather heading here, and right after that is heading towards you. But just random fungal leaf spot, probably Cercospora, um, anthracnose alternaria, maybe, I'm not sure. So if we have any other questions or comments, if you want to squeeze them in real quick. And I'm going to be leaving here in a few minutes and I'm going to a local farm. And one of the things they have growing there is jalapenos. I'm going to buy a whole bunch and I'm going to can them. And because I know that after this freeze, they're going to freeze and they'll be dead and they'll probably be mush. So. <laughs> yep. Good time to buy them. I might be coming by. Um, I have my, I have something to pick up from Brittany. Um, so. It's probably this. What is that? A bag of some kind of treats. It looks like, it smells like chocolate and it looks like there's powdered sugar on it. Oh no! And it I didn't looks like it that. might have been made out of checks. No, it was a, a it's a craft that I made <laughs> that I oh. have to pick up from her. Oh well, you're getting something special. I guess so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, well, everyone have a wonderful Merry Christmas and stay warm. Follow our tips. It's okay if you know you start 2023 with a kind of barren, wintry looking yard. It, you know, there are good things about it too. Some of the nasty bugs we don't like will be at least inhibited. Um, did, did you have a link for the YouTube? Yes. Channel? Oh yeah, you do. Well, I'm gonna show it. Or you can just- Here we go. You can and go. I will go ahead and put the link in the chat also, because nobody wants to write down all those letters and numbers and little leaning slashy things. So, Or you could just go to YouTube and do a search for Hernando County government and you'll find it. Well, yeah, you can do that too. Mm -hmm. And then save it as one of your favorites <laughs> and go through all 100 videos and like them. <laughs> you don't have to watch them. Just click like. <laughs> yes, and it's a great way to learn things because people will send us, e both of us, emails and everybody else here at the office emails about really commonly asked questions. Like right now, how do I cover my plants? How do I do it? And we just email back a link 
right, right. Lily has several videos that explains it and shows it. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's already mm -hmm. done. And we just share it. And if you watch mm -hmm. the class, it's going to tell you in depth everything you need to know. The other way extension used to work because you would tell 12 people a day the same 12 things <laughs> now we have you know more um ways to reach out to reach more people more efficiently as well too yeah yeah and then uh, obviously if we email it to you now you have it and if you want to we'll go back in a few weeks it's like how did i get there oh i have it in my email i have it written down whatever it might be mm -hmm. so yeah, we still have people who come here in person now and That's bring. Fine. I mean, there, there's a good combination. There's a time and a place for, for both, however we can reach out. So, you know, show my email again in case they have questions if they're bored or trying to escape family over next week. <laughs> I should be around um, most of the day. It's, I'll be here Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. We are all oh, after today. I'm gone till January 3rd, guys. You can well, email. I know, me. you know, those academic people, you get all that time off. <laughs> Linda, I need, I need some, some free time to just be alone with my thoughts and kind of recharge. But you said you had family coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go outside and recharge, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Linda, thank you so much. Uh, we're glad that you tuned in and watched us live and thank you so much for doing the survey and you're very welcome and we'll be back here again not next Thursday but the Thursday after that it'll be 2023 and we'll start the new year off with a bang and we'll try to get Brittany here to talk about mysterious fish and stuff and if we do have Brittany on here everybody needs to start asking in the comments where's the best place to go out and catch redfish okay I tell, her, I tell her her main job is sharing the best fishing spots oh all right the people that's what she does for the community so okay yeah i think she does a whole lot more than that <laughs> <laughs> i know she does it's a running joke guys and uh, uh we'll just see when we get a reaction out of her <laughs> okay well, it looks like we're a little bit over time here. So thank you so much. Everybody have a wonderful Christmas holiday season, uh, bitter Arctic vortex weekend, I guess, mm -hmm. and whatever else you have planned. And we won't be back next Thursday, but we will be back the Thursday after that. So buddy, we will see you. Well, Hey, quit that. We will see you next year also. And with that, have a great holiday. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.